Tension on deck. Please stand for our invocation. I invite you to pray. Most gracious God, we pause this morning to ask for your blessings on this graduating class. Thank you for the new insights and wisdoms they have gained. Thank you for their knowledgeable instructors, committed SLPOs, and their dedicated A school staff. And thank you for the love and support of their family and friends. God, help them now to feel the true measure of their accomplishment and know that it was worth it. May today be a memory that burns bright within them. Strengthen them and bless them now. This is our prayer. Amen. Please be seated. Commander Fernandez, chaplain, staff, family and friends, and most importantly, graduates, Welcome to the graduation ceremony for Machinist Mate Class 2234 and Electronics Technician Class 2224. Today is a special day for these sailors as it marks the completion of long weeks of hard work. I'm pleased we're here to recognize the achievements of these young men and women. Today's guest speaker was born in Greenville, North Carolina and joined the Navy in 2008. After completing recruit training in Great Lakes, Illinois, he attended Nuclear Field A School and Power School in Charleston before going to prototype in Boston Spa, New York. He reported to the USS Abraham Lincoln, a nuclear power aircraft carrier home ported in Everett, Washington, and the USS Ronald Reagan, home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. While serving, he completed two deployments, three patrols, seven operational reactor safeguard exams, and on the Lincoln completed a refueling complex overhaul where the ship performs much needed upgrade while repairing and refueling the reactors. With two highly successful sea tours, he's also reported to the Nuclear Power Training Unit Boston Spa, New York, where he was the staff instructor and instrumental in the qualification of over 1,500 junior sailors. Most recently, he reported here to Charleston as a math instructor, and recently was selected to serve as a section advisor, an assignment only given to staff who exhibit enviable standards and excellence. His character is in line with the Navy's core values, and his actions are an example the entire command can strive to emulate. So please join me in a warm round of applause for Machinist Mate Nuclear First Class, Surface Warfare Qualified, Kelly Wall. Commander, chaplain, staff, family, and friends. Nuclear power could trace its inception to just after World War II when then Captain Rick Elder recognized the importance that nuclear power would have in the post-war era. Fast forward to 1952, when the crew of the first nuclear-powered submarine, USS Nautilus, began training on revolutionary systems that have changed the face of naval warfare, the date of 70 years ago today. Every Friday, we graduate new classes to welcome you into ranks, a program that has seen over 140,000 graduates to date. Looking back now, it's been more than 13 years since I sat in this very room in my own A-School graduation, ecstatic that I had made it through now every one of you has earned this achievement. Know that all of us are proud to see you here and share this momentous occasion. But remember, your sacrifice isn't over. It's only going to continue as you make your way to power school where you further learn your craft on how to safely and reliably operate our submarines and aircraft carriers. Families, your support for your sailors is vital. Know that they are making a difference in the Navy. It may not be today, as they spend 12 to 15 hours in the building, but one day, it will be them that operates and supervises our propulsion plants. Graduates, as you make your way towards the fleet, find your strengths and weaknesses. One person's strength can be another's weakness, and through teamwork, we can overcome any challenge. Lastly, I will leave you with a quote from Vince Lombardi. We will chase perfection, but we will chase it relentlessly, knowing all the while we can never attain it. But along the way, we shall catch excellence. This is what it means to be a nuclear trained operator. Always do your best and never settle for anything less. Military members, attention! Graduating students, I will now proc you to the rank of third class petty officer. To all who saw Sheedy's presence, greetings! Greetings! Know ye that by the authority vested in me, you're placing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of these sailors 
I do hereby appoint you to the rank of third class petty officer, the United States Navy, as such, from the 19th day of August, 2022. Your appointment as a petty officer in the United States Navy makes you heir to a long and proud tradition of naval leadership. By accepting this appointment, you are charged with demonstrating those standards of performance, moral courage, and dedication to the Navy and the nation, which may serve as an enviable example to your fellow Navy men and women. Your desire to excel and to guide others must be boundless. Your appearance must be a model for others, and your performance must be a continual reflection of your sincerity, attention to duty, and moral responsibility. By exhibiting unfailing trust and obedience towards superiors, cooperation and loyalty to your peers, understanding and strength to your subordinates, you will contribute greatly to the effectiveness and good name of the United States Navy. Families, please join me in a round of applause for the Navy's newest third class petty officers. Please be seated. Each of these sailors has earned their new title. There are those, however, who stand out from the rest as evidence by having the highest grade point average among their classmates. The instructors, advisors, and classmates recognize them for their achievements, and we call these sailors our honor graduates. Today's honor graduates are machinist mate, third class, Shaked Sagi. Electronics Technician 3rd Class, Carl Stork. <laughs> Honor graduates, front and center. Left, face! The Honor Graduate Award will be presented by Senior Chief Winders and Commander Fernandez. Military personnel, attention to honors. Right, face! From Commanding Officer, Naval Nuclear Power Training Command to Machinist Mate, third class, Shaked Sagi. Electronics Technician, third class, Carl Stork. Congratulations for achieving the highest grade point average among all the graduates from your class at Nuclearfield A School, Charleston. Your standing as number one reflects your personal motivation, academic excellence, and dedication to duty. Your outstanding performance serves as a superb example to your shipmates and is in keeping with the highest traditions of United States Naval Service. Best wishes, signed S.J. McGinnis, Captain, United States Navy. Left face. Military personnel, please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce the section leading pay officer for class 2234, Chief Machinist Mate Nuclear, Surface Warfare Qualified, Matthew Jordan. Today you're going to graduate Nuclear Field A School, and from here you're going to go to Power School, where we're going to teach you a little bit more about what it means to be a new, a little bit more of the intricacies. From there you're going to take all of that book knowledge that we've given you, and we're going to take you down to the prototypes. From there you're going to get your certification. That certification is what actually marks you as a nuclear operator in the United States Navy. Parents, family, and friends, your support for your sailor has led them to success. I'm sure that they've talked to you and they've complained about how hard it's been, how much they've had to struggle, how hard their chief has been on them, or Petty Officer. And your words of encouragement have led them to the success. Take, take pride in that. Be thankful that you have such amazing friends and, and uh, kids. Class, what has gotten you here is that extra, the extra hours, those late nights, your determination, that never quit attitude that you got. It's not by no accident, and there is no luck in this program. You work to get here. You made the right decision, and you chose to be successful. There were struggles along the way, and in these struggles, you've learned to grow, and you're going to make yourself better, and by that, make the nature better. 
I only hope that you maintain the high level of degree of excellence that I have tried to teach you. You are now going to be a third class petty officer, and in that you need to be proud. But as of today, you are part of the Snipes. Families, if you don't know what that means, please ask your sailors what it means to be a snipe. They've all been taught. Remember that pride. Remember the time that we spent on the Yorktown when I showed you the history and the heritage of what we are. I hope that you think back to that whenever it's times get rough in power school or in prototype or in the fleet. Remember, it's easier to know where you're going after you've seen where you've been. Think on it fondly. Right now, presenting Class 2234 Alpha. Left, wait. Machinist Mate, third class, Jonathan Bartravino. <laughs> Machinist Mate, third class, Calizia Bell. Machinist Mate, third class, Brandon Dominguez. Machinist Mate, third class, Nicholas LeBoy. Machinist Mate, third class, Daniel Osborne. Machinist Mate, third class, Sergio Puente. Machinist Mate, third class, Nathaniel Velez Lopez. Graduating with distinction, Machinist Mate Third Class Joseph Armijo. Machinist Mate Third Class Larry Clark. Machinist Mate Third Class Emiliano Del Rio. Machinist Mate Third Class Stacy Garcia. Machinist Mate, third class, Victor Hand. <laughs> Machinist Mate, third class, Jonathan McCarthy. Machinist Mate, third class, Sean Russell. Machinist Mate, third class, Christopher Sperling. Machinist Mate, third class, Caden Stuckey. Machinist Mate, third class, John Trantham. Now, graduating with honors. Machinist Mate, third class, Jake Devlin. Machinist Mate, third class, Adrian Elizondo. Machinist Mate, third class, Caleb Gugudan. Machinist Mate, third class, Vakari Howard. Machinist Mate, third class, Justin Howard. Machinist Mate, third class, Robert Morris. Machinist Mate, third class, Shaquet Sagi. Machinist Mate, third class, Isaiah Wolf. the section leading petty officer for class 22-24. Electricians make first class submarines qualified, Larry Pruitt.
families, Lieutenant Commander, Chaplain, welcome. Thank you for honoring us with your presence today. Six months, it's a long time. Many things can occur in six months. The earth travels 242 million miles. A baby is born and speaks their first word. A submarine will leave home port and return for a deployment. And lastly, your child read 4,794 pages, technical documents, and retained 83% of that information. <laughs> Impressive. What we ask them to do is no easy task. A typical day for them looks like this. Wake up, 0500. Participate in physical training for an hour. Be in class from 0700 to 1500, that's 3 p.m. for us non-military types, learning. They study for an additional two to three hours. They have an exam every week, sometimes twice per week. And somewhere in that busy schedule, they eat three times per day, wash and fold their laundry, clean their barracks room, and find outlets to safely alleviate the stress. The information that your child learned is typically taught over the course of two years in a college setting. What we ask them to do on a daily basis is no easy task. And yet, every day, they woke up and rose to the challenge. What your child accomplished is a testament to the drive and dedication that you have instilled in them. And for that, I thank you. The challenge of being a successful nuclear operator isn't over yet. It's just started. We have a saying in the fleet that I think is fitting here. It gets better after wars. <laughs> Families, wars is an exam where an external team comes on board and they look at every aspect of nuclear operations, how we operate, how we do maintenance. They test our level of knowledge. Wars is a team effort and a team grade. The challenges that lay ahead are going to be more difficult than the last. If you continue to work together as a team, you will overcome these challenges and ask, what's next? I have no doubt in my mind that the graduates sitting in front of me today are going to be successful. Each one of them will leave behind a legacy of their own. Each one of them will have the opportunity to be a role model and mentor junior sailors just as I for you. Graduates, as you move on to the next stage in your career, I want you to keep one phrase in mind. Who do you want to be? With that, now presenting class 22-24 Tango. Left face. Electronics Technician, third class, Patrick Anderson. <laughs> Electronics Technician, third class, Thomas Coulter. <laughs> Electronics Technician, third class, Vincent Guerrero. Electronics Technician Seaman, Cody Height. Face. Electronics Technician Third Class, Denny Hilsebron. Electronics Technician Third Class, Liam Kelly. Electronics Technician, Seaman, Joshua Mullins. <laughs> Electronics Technician, Third Class, William Pacino. <laughs> Electronics Technician, Third Class, Lincoln Randall.
Electronics Technician, third class, Samuel Sisko. <laughs> Electronics Technician, third class, Connor Stewart. <laughs> Electronics Technician, third class, Landon Wright. Now, graduating with distinction, electronics technician, third class, Cooper Burner. <laughs> electronics technician, third class, Thomas Hanwell. <laughs> electronics technician, third class, Taylor Matsumura. Electronics Technician, 3rd Class, Tristan McCann. <laughs> Electronics Technician, 3rd Class, Jessica Rodriguez. <laughs> Electronics Technician, 3rd Class, Luis Piegas Gerady. Now, graduating with honors, Electronics Technician, 3rd Class, Carl Stork. <laughs> electronics Technician, 3rd Class, Ian Villanueva. <laughs> electronics Technician, 3rd Class, Thaddeus Wingate. Each of these sailors has exerted a great deal of personal drive, overcame obstacles, and made individual sacrifices to be here. Still, there are those that, by the manner in which they have completed their training, have inspired others. What sets these sailors aside from their peers are the consistencies of their efforts, the refusal to quit, and the example they set. These sailors are the recipients of the Commanding Officer's Personal Excellence Award. Today's recipients are when I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Machinist mate, third class, Jake Devlin. <laughs> Electronics technician, third class, Taylor Matsumura. Priorities <laughs> front and center. Excited. The Personal Excellence Award will be presented by Senior Chief Plyler and Commander Fernandez. Military members, attention to honors. From Commanding Officer, Naval Nuclear Power Training Command to Machinist Mate, Third Class, Jake Devlin. Electronics Technician, Third Class, Taylor Matsumura. The Commanding Officer's Personal Excellence Award is awarded to the student in each class who has exhibited the greatest degree of professionalism. This student stands apart from peers by virtue of hard work, personal dedication, and a demonstrated desire to succeed. Your impressive dedications to duty, exceptional academic efforts, and perseverance in the face of adversity have made you an outstanding example for your classmates to emulate. The professionalism exhibited while performing your duties is in keeping with our Navy core values and warrants your selection and recognition today as the recipient of the Commanding Officer's Personal Excellence Award. My staff and I are proud of your demonstrated effort, leadership, and outstanding results. Congratulations and well done, signed S.J. McGinnis, Captain, United States Navy. Today's presiding officer is named Lieutenant Commander Coralie Fernandez. 
and he's a native of El Paso, Texas. He enlisted in the Navy in May of 1992 and, and reported to Recruit Training Command in Orlando, Florida. He completed his Nuclear Field A School and Nuclear Power School in Orlando and Nuclear Prototype Training in Mark in Boston Spa, New York. His enlisted shore tours consisted of a staff instructor at SHG Prototype in Boston Spa and a recruiter in charge in El Paso, Texas. His enlisted sea tours were the USS Nevada Blue Crew in Bangor, Washington, the USS Asheville and the USS Salt Lake City, both in San Diego, California. Commander Fernandez became a Chief Petty Officer in September of 2003 and served as an Electrical Division LCPO on the Salt Lake City, uh, sorry, the USS Salt Lake City, before commissioning as a Nuclear Limited Duty Officer in November of 2004. In January 2005, he reported to the USS Santa Fe as the Overhaul Coordinator for a 13-month major CNO availability. In February 2008, he reported to the USS Nimitz as Reactor Electrical Technician Assistant where he attended a six-month repair period followed by a 9.5-month deployment in the Arabian Gulf. He then reported to Submarine Squadron 11 in May of 2010, where he served as the Performance Monitoring Team's San Diego officer in charge. In May of 2013, he reported to the USS Carl Vinson as the Reactor Maintenance Officer, where he successfully completed a 10-month deployment to the Arabian Gulf and planned and executed a six-month nuclear propulsion overhaul. He then reported to Nuclear Field A School in December 2019 as the Director of the Students Department and Director of Mechanical Department. Commander Fernandez has been awarded two Meritorious Service Medals, five Navy Commendation Medals, five Navy Achievement Medals, and several other campaign medals and awards. He and his wife of 30 years, Diana, have four children, Krista, Andrew, Alexis, and Alexander, and five grandchildren, Chloe, Angie, Selena, Austin, and Katie. With 30 years of continued excellent service to this Navy and to the country, I present to you Commander Fernandez. just as long as the graduation ceremony. So sorry for that. I didn't mean it to go that long. But in any case, hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, chaps, staff, friends and family. Of course, these petty officers here, these machinist mates, electronics technicians. Uh, good morning to you all. Welcome to sunny Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, may not so sunny today. I apologize for that. And the weekend's going to be just the same. So uh, hurricane season goes through September. Anyways, uh, but welcome to witness the A school graduation of 2234 Alpha and uh, excuse me 2134 Alpha and 24 Tango. Uh, I want to thank you all for supporting and celebrating your sailors here today. Uh, the support from the home front enables many of our sailors to adjust a new way of military life and help overcome the academic challenges we throw at them. Folks like yourselves play an important role, uh, important contributing role in our sailors' ability to succeed in graduating the first school in the Navy Nuclear Power Training Pipeline. They will continue to need your support as they move on from here to Nuclear Power School and when they continue on to Nuclear Prototype and eventually to the fleet to serve as, as trusted and qualified propulsion plant operators on board of either a nuclear aircraft carrier or a nuclear submarine. These sailors are pivotal in the defense of our nation and weaving that blanket of freedom that we all get to enjoy. Uh, I, I also want to thank our A school staff. Our mission here at the school is to provide fundamental nuclear rate training for machinist mates, electrician mates, and our electronics technicians, and instill the values and, sti and standards required of a third class petty officer, and prepare these students for the academic rigors of nuclear power school. Our staff of academic advisors and classroom instructors have put forth extraordinary effort um, to provide the best possible training and mentorship to these students and have led them to this point of graduating today. So staff, y'all have achieved your mission. Congratulations and bravo zulu to you guys in developing the future of our nuclear Navy. Now graduates, and I'm, this is a canned speech, but I'll tell you, I'm just gonna go off a little bit in that, you know, when these, uh, at least for the machinist mates, uh, I talked to them at the day one of A school, and I asked them, you know, like if you were to think of all the military different groups and organizations uh, that we have, all branches across, we'll even throw the Coast Guard in that, 
Hopefully there's no coasties here. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Uh, what, who do you think are the badasses? Like, the most elite group. You know, and I, I get the typical answer, right? Army Rangers, Navy SEAL, uh, Marine Corps Recon, the Parajumpers, and stuff like that. And, but more importantly, I wanted to know what makes you think that they're elite? You know, when you say, oh, Navy SEALs, what jumps out at you, right? And the responses I get, well, the training that they do, and the mission, the covert operations, uh, and then how hard it is. But what it really boils down to is that they are the only ones that can do what they do. The only ones. No one else can do it. Because if everybody could do it, then everybody would be doing it. So when you think of that, when you think of it from that perspective, then I would offer that these sailors in front of you are the most elite group out there of all military branches. They are the most academically challenging program that any branch of service has to offer. To put it in perspective, there's 336 million people in the United States. Of that population, 336,000 are in the United States Navy, active duty. That's less than 0.1%. If you just think from a perspective like, what does it take to, uh, to be in the Navy? Well, number one, you have to volunteer, right? Mom and dad threatening to kick you out of the house unless you do something in your life doesn't count, right? You have to volunteer. You go to mess. You raise your right hand. You're staring at that flag, and you're volunteering to serve. Less than 0.1% of the U.S. population does that, right? And then you have to pass your medical and your physical. You have to do that crazy duck walk in your bra and underwear type of thing, right? Right? For the guys, you know, turn and cough, that stuff. You've got to pass all that, right? You have to take an entrance exam and pass that test, right? So we, everybody in the Navy does that. But when we start talking about the elite groups, in this building alone, there's 3,000 students, just like them, training to be propulsion plant operators, to go work on a nuclear reactor to learn nuclear engineering, just like Pedalso Pruitt said, two years condensed into a four or six month program, right? 3,000 people divided by 336,000 uh, sailors. That's less than 1%. So less than 0.1% of 1% are even able to be sitting here today. Just think about that, right? And our academic attrition is at an all time low. Our academic uh, attrition is about 5%, I think is the right number, right? So, you know, the effort that our staff put into just getting these sailors where they're at today, right, that's just helping. But your sailors are here where they're at right now, wearing that third class probe or that propeller or that atom on their sleeve, right? That signifies that they're subject matter experts in their field, in their rate, and they haven't even gotten a taste of what they're going to be doing in the nuclear Navy yet. Like, we haven't even talked nuclear anything to them. That's what they're going to pick up here in a couple months, right? But yeah. These guys are the badasses, I'm telling you. And you guys need to believe it, because one of these days, you're going to be on a submarine, or uh, you know, when you're submer uh, submerged greater than 700 feet, going in excess of 20 knots, and you're twiddling your thumbs, staring at a bunch of instrumentation, you're wondering, like, why in the heck did I do this? Man, this sucks. <laughs> right? Or if you're in Shaft Alley, um, you know, on an aircraft carrier, and you're hopping ladder belt 70 feet up, or how many feet it is, Right on eight different things, and when you're staring in the vent of of uh, the the nice cold air that's blowing at you in the Arabian Gulf, and you step away, literally six inches away, and it's 134 degrees in your face, tell me, am I right, Chief? Yeah. Right, and you're wondering why did I do this? Think back to the reason why you joined that first day you went to boot camp, the day the day that you're sitting here, high school graduation. Think back to why you did that. Maybe it was to be part of something greater, to weave that blanket of freedom. Maybe it was to send a paycheck home, to help mom and dad with the siblings or whatever the thing was. Maybe it was to support your young family, you just got married, you had a kid, or whatever the maybe. Maybe you just needed some structure in your life because the direction you were going to just plainly suck and you needed something, right? Remember that reason, guys. Remember that. But above all else, whether you do six years or you stay in the as long as I did for 30, you are guaranteed to never flip burgers again. Right, class leader Lamont? You will never punch holes in people's ears at Claire Boutique in the local mall anymore. You'll never do that again. You have financial security for the rest of your lives. I'd be shocked if you didn't get a job after six years making $80,000, way more than that actually. Right? But it's up to you. Right? It's up to you. So you guys have to make, uh, take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. Opportunity would come knocking, but you have to be willing to take that opportunity, okay? 
Uh, where did I leave off on this thing? <laughs> Woo! Man, I get passionate. I love this thing. Uh, the whole reason why I'm doing this, by the way, this graduation thing, I had this vision a long, long time ago that I wanted to end my career here in this building, right, to give back to the students that are taking my footsteps. Because quite frankly, whether these sailors decide to be successful or not does not change what happens to me in the rest of my life. In fact, in about 30 minutes is my retirement ceremony, and I'm going to peace out this door and never look back. Right? <laughs> so whether you guys are successful or not does not impact me one way or the other. But I truly care for your success. Every staff member in this building cares for your success. And why is that? If you just think about well, why, why do I care so much? You know, I'm never going to see these guys again. Because these are the next generation of nukes. We've been doing nuclear propulsion for over 65 years. And you know how many incidents we've had? Zero. Zero incidents. Why? Because the foundation of our program is based on integrity. And these... Am I supposed to pay attention to that? Okay, anyways. But integrity is the foundation of our program. We are so super anal about integrity. But without integrity, there's all these other core about, uh, character traits, the nuclear traits that, we, that Admiral Richtover laid out a long time ago. And those things are such as like accountability and responsibility and trustworthiness and honesty and caring and respect and all those, right? You can't have those if you don't have that foundation of integrity. I told you guys a sea story, right? My short story when I was a recruiter in charge. And I compromised that integrity and I paid for it. I, have, I was fortunate that I got a second break. Not everybody gets that, right? But, the, you know, you guys are the legacy, and you guys are the next one. The, the very second that I pop off the stage, I've created a hole that I need one of you all to fill, right? When Chief Jordan walks off the plank for the final time, Howard, you're going to fill that hole, right? Well, one of you, Howard, there's two of them in the crowd, so anyway. <laughs> right? So when you guys go on liberty and you leave from here, right, remember those lessons and behaviors that you've learned to, that have made you successful and apply those lessons and behaviors in power school. Okay? And when you find yourself in a challenging situation and you're pondering the choices you're about to make, you can always rely on your Navy core values of honor, courage, and commitment. And the nuclear program principles that we just taught you here and that I just spoke to. Remember, your integrity is yours to keep. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody can take it from you. Only you dish it out and you give it away. Okay? Uh, strive to be excellent in all that you do. Be persistent in reaching your maximum potential and always do your best. Always do your best. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the staff here at Nuclear Field A School, I congratulate you guys all on a job well done. Celebrate your achievement this weekend, even though it's raining out. Uh, you've absolutely earned it. We are all proud of your accomplishment. We look forward to your continued, to your continued success in the program and in serving with you in the fleet. Uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to Chaps. Uh, so she can get us out of here and get, and get you guys on your way for some well-deserved liberty. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Please stand for our benediction. I invite you to pray. Gracious God, we thank you again for this time that you have given us to honor and celebrate these graduates. We pray that they will go to their next phase with a sense of pride and confidence, ready to face what lies before them. Bless them now, God, always providing them guidance, safety, and protection. May they strive toward excellence in all that they do. May they go now with the knowledge that they have your fullest and most profound blessing. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. This concludes today's graduation ceremony. Graduates, congratulations and job well done. Military personnel, carry on.